Hello everyone, Nathaniel here from Super Game Crashers and welcome back to our classic Ticket series. Welcome to episode 6 of our Brave New World. So you guys uh, may remember in the last episode uh, that we did a fair bit uh, with Red Power and Industrial Craft and we touched a lot into uh, equivalent exchange. We're actually going to go straight back into equivalent exchange uh, before we move to somewhere new as you can probably see on the map site B. I have built a second site and that is where we are going to be exploring Buildcraft. Now Buildcraft is a really 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 big mod and it needs a lot of resources so I've built a sort of separate area for us to do all that uh, and I've set up a small area uh, of machines so that we can start building straight away and and from episode 7 to episode 10 is going to be all build craft and then we'll get into doing proper projects uh, in this playthrough series. So you've probably noticed a strange sound behind me. Tick, 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 tick. Is it a bomb? No, it's not. It's our EMC generator. Hooray! I set it up. Uh, I set it up for a couple of reasons. Uh, first off, the cow was incredibly difficult to get into this little area, and as soon as I got him in, I forgot that I wasn't recording and set it up. Now, I'm going to show you uh, exactly what this machine does, uh, how it works, and all that. So let's begin. Okay, so do you remember in the last episode, we put this thing down, it's called a deployer. And what it does is it's an automatic right click button. Uh, basically, you put something in this and the deployer deploys it uh, onto uh, an animal. It then immediately pulls it back if it has no physical being, such as a bucket doesn't actually have any physical attributes. You can't place a bucket in the world. You have to instead uh, simply right click the cow and you get a milk bucket. So that's what this is doing and every time it gets clicked it is deploying a milk bucket on the cow and then pulling it back out and then this filter will then take a full milk bucket out and take it along the pneumatic pipe into this condenser and the condenser is then converting the milk bucket into a bucket an empty bucket and a little bit more EMC and that little bit more EMC is used to make more buckets until the inventory fills up uh, and then we have this filter which will take out an empty bucket it will travel along this pipe and back into the deployer to uh, complete the process and I've set the timer to run at a very high rate so we've got this lovely chain of buckets constantly going in and out of the system now here's the interesting thing about pneumatic pipes if the inventory that the pneumatic pipe is pumping into is full then the pneumatic pipe will back out, uh, back the item out and send it into an adjacent inventory, see, like that. So every so often we have two spare milk buckets which are taken out of this chest and placed in this one. And this condenser is full of a block of diamond. So that's 73,000 EMC. And there we are, we have another block of diamond. And this system has only been going for about 10 minutes now and it's already made me uh, significantly more than this. I actually used a bit when I was building the site B. Uh, so we've made quite a lot. We've made about, shall we say, about 200,000 EMC from about 10 minutes uh, worth of this machine running. So we'll just sleep through the night so we don't get any more mobs spawning. I can already see them uh, licking their lips and wanting to eat my tasty brains. And then we'll go straight into equivalent exchange. Ooh, yes. So, uh, now, we need some things from Equivalent Exchange before we can go over to our Buildcraft area. And the reason we need our Equivalent Exchange stuff is because once we're over there, we really won't be coming back to this area for about three episodes. Uh, for you guys, that's about an hour's worth of content. For me, it's going to be significantly longer uh, because I like to set up before I do an episode. Okay, back into Equivalent Exchange. Now, we need something called Mobius Fuel so we can make something called a Klein Star. Now, Mobius Fuel, you guys may remember, is basically four alchemical coal, and you make one alchemical coal from three coal and a Philosopher's Stone, or a Pea Stone, as I like to call it, and that makes a Mobius Fuel. You'll then, then need eight Mobius Fuel to make a Klein Star Ean uh, and a Diamond, and that's what we're going to do now. Now, you guys probably remember me saying in the last episode that a Klein star is used to convert matter and energy uh, into each other. So if I connect this 
to this. It's learned it. And here comes the clever part. If I put this in here... Okay, that wasn't probably wasn't as clever as I thought it was going to be. Um, I now have a, a, a rather large amount of useless stuff. Um, okay, that probably wasn't the smartest idea in the world. Oops. Uh, right. Well, I guess we'll just have to um, make a uh, a new type of Klein Star, the second version. This was not really the plan. But there we go. Now we have made something called a Kleinstar Zwei, which is the second version. And I believe these are actually counting in German uh, numbers, so in zwei, uh, zwei, and so on and so forth. And now we can actually store all of our EMC uh, correctly. And I have a spare bucket for some reason, I don't know why. But yeah, I can put all that in there. And now I have 190,000 EMC. Ooh, that's lovely. And when we take this transmutation table with us, uh, by the way, it doesn't lose the items once it's broken and go to our site B, we now have a nice amount of EMC to work with. But believe it or not, that won't actually be enough for when we actually start with Buildcraft. We're going to need a lot more. And uh, before we get into that, we'll start uh, looking at some, some ways of defeating the horrible mobs that spawn around us. And we're going to be using these things, interdiction torches. Now, you guys know that torches, they light up the area, and if your light level is above level 7, then you'll be fine because no mobs will spawn in that area. If it's lower, then mobs will begin to spawn. But other than that, the torches don't really do much. Interdiction torches are completely different. They're a sort of teal blue light torch. They give off more light, and when you place them down, any mob that comes near them is instantly repelled. So, uh, that goes for passive mobs such as uh, cows, chickens, pigs, and hostile mobs such as zombies, creepers, and spiders, uh, as well as skeletons. Uh, it doesn't stop the skeletons from shooting you, however, so make sure you have some walls up uh, as well. So we're going to make some of them, and the only thing that's missing from this recipe is our Philosopher's Stone. So, let's make these now. Okay. Like this, like this. And eventually, uh, I know these recipes seem very complicated, but um, when you get down to it, oh no, you don't get much out of them, I'm sorry. But uh, if you teach it to the table, like that, and then I can put this in here, in here, I can get more of them out. Yeah, I've got uh, mm, 10 should do it. Yeah, that'll be fine. As you can see, we've already lost a significant amount of our EMC just by getting these special torches, and we'll be losing a lot more as time goes on. Now, the next thing that we're going to be looking at is something that we really, really need. It is dark matter. Now, don't get this confused with space matter. This is, in fact, a part of the magic of equivalent exchange, and it is uh, effectively condensed... Um, diamonds and to make it you need this stuff the stuff I couldn't pronounce before it's actually called eternalist fuel and uh, a block of diamond which is the reason why we need that machine running it's very very helpful and uh, we need dark matter for a very special type of machine that is an equivalent exchange you guys may remember the tier 1 collector well we're going to make the mark 2 version of that we're gonna make the energy collector mark 2 and for that we need glowstone blocks the energy collector that we had and dark matter and that's what we're going to use to make our second version now I don't think I taught this to the table I didn't uh, basically if you have any new blocks you really just want to teach the table uh, so that you have them in the future Did I teach it dark matter that is the thing isn't it I have now, and as you can see, 139,000 EMC. Very, very useful. So, put that there. Energy Collector Mark II. And uh, Energy Collectors, uh, that are the second version, they don't actually need any light source to work. They'll just continually work. So, very useful. The other thing we're going to need is an energy condenser. Now, here's the clever part. If I get one of these, and one of these, and I put this down and then I connect my energy condenser to it and I put some torches in there as you can see the energy condenser uh, the energy collector is transferring its energy 
to the condenser and making us some uh, EMC or items ready for us, us to build. And this is useful because we won't be around our uh, machine, uh, but without our machine we wouldn't have been able to get this far this quickly. So this is going to be very useful when we take it over to the Billcraft area and uh, in the future we'll be able to make more of these and connect them all together to make what is known as uh, collector arrays. So very, very, very useful. Oh, and you can't break them, so don't worry about it. Uh, they, they don't smash and you don't lose them uh, unless of course you drop them purposely into something like lava or anything. Okay, so the next thing we're going to need before we go to our build craft area is we're going to want to keep this machine running. Now I know it seems like, oh well it's just going to run itself, you know, it'll be fine and all that, but there is a problem. Minecraft, uh, the way it runs, is pretty interesting. Uh, the way it works is the area that you're standing in is called a chunk, uh, and a chunk is 16 blocks in every direction. It also me it also loads um, straight up and straight down. This is the reason why some older computers really struggle to load Minecraft because Minecraft is not only loading the area that you can see, but like some games, but also the areas you can't see. So right below us is obviously caves and other such things and your computer has to load that in order for Minecraft to run. So Minecraft can be a bit intensive for computers. Um, so the way the game works as to not completely break your machine is it only loads up a certain amount of chunks within the player's area and when you get further and further away it unloads chunks and now I've tested this out I put a timer down and what happened is by the time I came back from site B and got to the timer the timer had stopped which tells me that this entire area this chunk is unloaded it doesn't load when I'm in that area which means that this machine will not be on and more than likely the cow for some reason will glitch out and get out and the timer will stop and it will just break this machine it also means that in the whole time that we are away uh, we won't actually collect any more diamonds to get around this problem we need to keep this chunk loaded and here's how we're gonna do it we're gonna build ourselves a chunk loader also known as a world anchor and what this does is it keeps the area loaded it is a little expensive but uh, with the stuff that we have uh, it's really not that bad uh, and this also saves me having to move the machine and find a cow and drag it all the way back to site B so we're going to just build this thing and place it probably right next to the machine and uh, yeah Hopefully, it'll keep the entire area loaded. Now, here's an interesting fact. I've never actually used one of these before. And you'll often find that if you go on to multiplayer servers, uh, world anchors are banned. Uh, hang on a second. Oh, lovely job. Um, yeah, they're banned uh, because uh, servers, obviously, they're trying to load up everything where the players are. They don't need these things loading up uh, everything as well. So, boop. And that's it. It's active. We don't have to do anything. We just leave it here and this area should remain loaded. It's not a big problem if it doesn't work. Um, I know that they can be a bit glitchy sometimes. Sometimes they don't work. Sometimes they can be disabled. Uh, but it should work. It should work fine. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I know it's probably a short episode. I don't want to go straight to site B because it is a bit of a trek and it will lag the computer as it loads chunks as I'm going there and that can really just ruin the recording. I'm also going to pick up a fair few other little bits and pieces uh, before I head off to site B. So I thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, this little video and in episode 7 we'll begin build craft and uh, there will be probably the final three videos in uh, a sort of tutorial phase. After that, I'll just explain to you guys what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Uh, so yeah, this has pretty much been like the prep area and then we're going over to a new area and then we're going to start building our big projects. So I thank you very much for watching guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. This is Nathaniel signing off from Super Game Crashers and I'll see you in the next video.